Here's my train story. The last minute before the final air horn, I stepped onto the Coast Starlighter out of Union Station. It was 9.15 in the morning, and I found a seat facing backwards. On the four-seaters to the rear on both sides of the car was a jazz band and their girlfriends. Some members overflowed into the seats facing towards me. Yet favor was it. They, as a band, old and gray, now were headed to the Blue Note in San Francisco to play a reunion gig. They had been headliners all through the 60s, signed recording track contracts, and moved to L.A. in the 70s. I was thrilled. Let the party begin. I settled into my seat and stashed my bag so to go to the cafe car. But I had to wait for the conductor to give me a tag to rest on the chrome liner above my seat. And I needed to get a good double seat for Mom, who was going to get on board and join me in Oxnard. The lady conductor came from the rear of the train. She greeted everyone and placed colored tabs above their seats. She was thrilled, yet professional, to meet the jazz band. She said, I hope you enjoy your trip. She and they were professionals. She gave me the same colored tab as the jazz band. So now I was in. We were all headed for San Francisco. We would all change to a bus in Oakland. We would find a pillow to rest our heads on. The jazz band was staying at the Hyatt Regency. Mom and I were staying at Van Ness Lombard Motor Express. Finally, coffee. Where's the cafe car? Laughter. So I headed for the rear of the train. After three bouncing cars, I came to the restaurant car. Fifteen tables to the side, all dripped in white, with plates set up and napkins folded. A waiter let me know he had reservations for lunch. I said yes, and asked if I could have a dinner reservation too. For two my mum and me. I turned and danced, bounced my feet back through the cars. I got to my seat and there was a party go going on. We had a jazz band on board, laughing about the old days. But there was no coffee there. So I headed north, then west, through the front of the Coast Starlighter, headed for Seattle. The cement graffitied Los Angeles River slipped by outside. Two cars down, I get to the next car. I kick the door. It opens. Between cars, I can see light down the crack between the steel plates that will make up the floor that I will step on. I take the step and kick the door to the dome car. Back in 1978, I entered the dome car. A 17-year-old. In this car, I met two men. They were engineers train engineers from the East Coast on vacation for a month. They were riding the rails where they had driven the trains. They wanted to know what it was like just to ride. In 1978, we became friends in the dumb car. They loved my stories of sailing the seas, but they were worried about me. I was alone, their 17-year-old friend departing in Richmond into unknown territory. They said to remember, the games you play, you set the rules. But I was in 1998 now, and there was no smoking in the dome car anymore. Only one man sat with a computer beforehand. His focus wasn't on the beautiful rocks besides him or the tunnel we sped through. I finally found the cafe car. I went down the ladder-like stairs and finally ordered coffee. My mum and I were going to meet on board in Oxnard, and we made a deal to meet in the cafe car. Then we would find two seats together in an unreserved car. I was hoping to keep the seats I had already claimed. There was a party going on. I was stumbling back to my seat with coffee, milk, and a cinnamon roll in a cardboard box. The dome car was tricky. I had to do a dance. 
I got to my seat and was entertained by great friendship reunion unfolding before me while I rode the train backwards. The restaurant was to the rear of the cafe car, was to the north. The dome car was on the way. First class was in the very rear of the restaurant car was really for them. Those in first class private rooms. So reservations from unreserved non-first class passengers are very important. Otherwise, you're stuck eating microwave sandwiches in the cafe car. I knew this fact. So when a tall, beautiful woman started talking about lunch, I had to interview on their private yet entertaining conversation. I told her to make a reservation in the restaurant to the rear. I told her I had one for mom and me at one, and I had even made my dinner reservation for 5.30. Off she went and came back with the news that they, too, were eating on white tablecloths at 1 and 5.30. Now they took an interest in me. I was in. Party on. Hoxnard Station, five minutes. Please gather your belongings and proceed to the exit door. No through passengers will be allowed off the train. There is no smoking on Amtrak platforms. The announcement came from the conductor blasted over the landscape. I spread my jackets and bag across two sits, seats and let the jazz band know to save the extra non-tab seat for my mom. I made it to the dome car and couldn't leave, go beyond. The Oxnard Plains stretched on both sides. Rows of ancient eucalyptus striped the landscape. I sat down to gaze as the industrial Oxnard replaced field crops. I saw mom get on the trains just on the next car. So I dashed down to meet her and help her with her cart. By the time we got settled, it was almost time for lunch. The conductor put her tab on the rail. My lunch, chicken, rice, and veggies was served as we pulled out of Santa Barbara. The coastline mesmerizes and of ahead of us lied the surf coast of Vandenberg Air Force Base. This surf view is view only from the train. This view is incredible. This I knew was ahead. So with napkins folded, we headed to claim a seat in the dome car. We were lucky we got a double seat on the west side the view side, but unlucky the west side is the sun side. We made friends with the family of four, a father, a son, his wife, and their child, grandchild. We were just, we, we just started talking all at once. This, I told the story of sailing from Mexico to Tahiti. I admitted I had been kicked off the ship then. The grandfather told a story of a time when he, too, couldn't handle order of command. He was a bomber pilot in 1945. They, hundreds of airplanes, flew over Japan for weeks. Then one day there was the biggest bang conceivable. He turned his plane around and immediately landed without control tower permission. He said they backwinded the Enola Gay. He said he was discharged immediately, put on a transport plane to San Francisco, and within a week, he was no longer in the military. He's been a civilian ever since. I could envision him in his chair staring off into space. Cowardice is not an easy story to tell. His son looked uncomfortable, but I was engaged in the story. I asked questions, never yet questioned his actions. He is a hero just because he was there. The mystery and silence of his story seemed the pain of the story. Telling me the story, the son relaxed. The grandson hung on every word. I thanked him for his service. Then we, grandfather and me, talked about all the fun we have taking the train. He said he always loved the friends he made. 
Me too. The surf disappeared as the train pulled into Guadalupe River, River Plain and headed north to San Luis Obispo. After that, the train would go real slow. There were many curves as the train climbed Cuesta Grade up the Paso Robles. The long haul between Paso and Oakland was broken up by another white napkin meal. Mom and I returned to our assigned seat by the are assigned by a tab seats. Now facing backwards, we waited. We waited in flickering light with darkness outside for the train to make it to Oakland. We were tired by then and slogged off the train and followed the jazz band onto the bus. We flew on a high-seated bus across the San Francisco Bay Bridge, welcomed by the bright lights. We arrived at this SF station, and a taxi took Mom and me to our destination. First, we got lost, but Lombard and Van Ness are, it's not hard to find.